As we give him glory today, you feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. And his great power toward us. I am truly blessed. You are truly blessed, not just to be here, but to be a recipient of what God has to offer us. And he offers to us, <clears throat> he offers to us the grace that is able to save our souls. Amen. The grace that has appeared teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live righteously and soberly in this present world. That's the kind of grace we preach here at Morningstar. A grace that teaches you how to deny yourself. Do you feel a sweet presence of the Lord today? Amen. We thank God for all the efforts. All the efforts that have gone before us to prepare you for the word. And that it might speak to us in a special manner. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Genesis 49 and 19. And then Mark chapter number 5. And if you found it, can you say amen? And if you found it, can the rest of you say amen? Even if you found it up there, it's fine. Amen. It reads, <clears throat> Gad is a troop Gad, a troop, shall overcome him. But he shall overcome at the last. Talks about a tribe, the tribe of Gad, which means a troop. A troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And then from the book of Mark, chapter number 5, verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And they came over unto the other side of the sea unto the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that when he had often bound, excuse me, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Savior, we are looking to you for the special unction from heaven. Open the windows, open the windows of heaven upon us, your church, and help us to receive a blessing. Fill my heart, my words, with your wisdom, we pray. In the hearts of everyone in this place, the ability to receive it. In Jesus' name we ask it. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments today and I want to preach to the overcomers. To the overcomers. Amen. The prophecy that was given to one of the tribes was this, is that this man by the name of, which meant an army or a troop, it said a troop is going to overcome you. The enemy is going to overcome you and take your victory. 
going to take what you have. But he says, but at the end, you're going to overcome that. Or you're going to overcome your overcomers. That which overtook you. And so this was a prophecy that was given to this, this troop or this, this tribe. This tribe is, was a unique tribe in the sense that when they had wandered through the wilderness and they came to the time, 40 years had passed over. We read in the scriptures that when they went to claim their promise on the other side, Gad was the troop or God, Gad was the tribe that looked to Moses and they said to Moses, Moses, we want to stay on this side. We don't want to cross over, but we want the land that we are standing on right now. And so, you know, it wasn't the promised land because Moses was, was told he was not going to see the promised land. So he stood there with them and he granted their wish. Apparently, God made a way for them to have that land. And so he said it was promised, it was given to them. And so when they came time for the rest of the tribe to go and receive their land on the other side of the Jordan, where it was split up open, they were told, you know, this is not going to be right. You are going to discourage your brethren. And they're going to be discouraged because you're not, they're not going to have your help in going into the land of promise. And so, yeah, they realized they're in their haste because where they were at, it was beautiful. It was like on the coastal area of the... Of the uh, Sea of Galilee, uh, there on the, on the shore of the, of the Jordan. And it was, looked like a vacation spot. It was beautiful. That streams running. And so they wanted that land. So they, they realized their mistake or their haste. And they said, well, we understand what's happening here. And we are going to go and fight with our brethren. And this was a command given. Go fight with your brethren and you can come back and have this land. And so they realized that this was the case. They said, oh, we will go. I said, we will fight. The only thing is let us leave our children and our wives back here to, to settle our claim. And we will go with our brethren. In fact, we will go in the front and we will fight with our brethren that they can get their portion of the promise. And then we'll come to ours. And so this was the agreement. They went out. They fought. And of course, the, you know the story. The rest of them received their allotted land. Only that Gad, they got to choose their land. You know, sometimes we, we're hasty, and before we ever even ask of God, we choose what we want. I don't know if you've ever been in that position, but I've been there before. And you choose before you even have inquired at the mouth of the Lord. That we, before we have even counseled with Him, we make decisions, and then God grants us our decisions. But they come with a little more toil than, and a little more hassle than we expected. You see, God will always bless his word. And when we put him first, he will, he will bless us. And so this is, what, this is the mistake that Gad made. And so the prophecy, though, had already been gone out prior to that. In the days of uh, Joseph and, and uh, Israel and it had already gone out that Gad, they're, the truth, they're going to be overcome. But they're going to be, at the end, they're going to be overcomers. Sometimes we learn a lesson by being overcome and overwhelmed first. So we learn our lesson many times. Bad decisions, and then we go through all this, but we remain close and humble before the Lord, and the Lord promises that we will become overcomers at that stage. So if you're in, uh, in between that or, or you've never heard, heard the concept and you're going through troubles, and I know you are because we all do. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We came into this. We came into this world already defeated. We were already overcome. But when we started out in the world and we became despondent or somebody brought the gospel to us, things began to change. Would you offer the Lord a clap offering for a few moments here? Yes, Lord. And so this is the, the legacy of Gad. 
that they disappear into history because they were the first ones taken captive. In fact, the Moabites later in time overcame their prosperity and took their land and they became subservient to the Moabites. And then, of course, they disappear into history through the Assyrians and so forth. Well, we know this, that the Bible said that they would overcome at the end. And you can, you can take it to the bank that when Jesus does come, this group of people will be victorious, especially in the end. Amen. Now, this is a, this is a situation. They're, this is in their personality. This is in their DNA. This is the prophecy that given to them. If you have a certain name given to you, more than likely your name is following that prophetic, that prophetic state. When, if you have godly parents that named you a certain way, you have those characteristics in you, and you have, uh, you have something to look forward to. Amen. Now, here is a group of people, though, in Jesus' day, when all the tribes are living in the surrounding areas. And Jesus has gone from Capernaum, I believe. He has gone across the lake, and he has appeared in the land of the Gadareans. Now, this is, they lived on the other side. And when they landed on the other side, you see, there was sort of a separation between these groups. They had not so much heard so much the fame of Jesus as others had. I'm sure they had, but it wasn't, they weren't clamoring to see him. In fact, when he landed, he had no one there to receive him, waiting to see the great miracles of Jesus Christ. Here was a part or a tribe, the land of Gad, the Gadareans, where there is a man, he's a Gadarean, who has been overwhelmed in his life. Somewhere along the line, this man had some situations, some vices. He had in him a, 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 perhaps an evil nature in him, where by the time that Jesus comes, this man is infamous. He is known throughout the land. They realize that this individual, he's a danger. He runs around uh, naked. Uh, he hides in the desert. He sleeps in the tombs. Uh, they try to help him uh, in order so he won't be scaring everybody around. Uh, they have taken him. They bound him with chains. Uh, and, but the chains, he's like, a, he's like an evil Samson almost. No chains can hold him. All the fetters, he's able to break them off. And so he is a terror to the land and a terror to himself. He is a cutter. He cuts himself. He is so miserable that he cuts himself and he bleeds and he offers some of his blood. The demons in him want his blood like to flow out of him. So he cuts himself. I hope I'm not speaking to a cutter or two here. But I want to tell you, if you're cutting yourself, if you're torturing, I'm talking about, I always cut myself, but it's not shaving. I'm talking about something outside of that. All right. I'm talking about, I'm talking about this stuff where teenagers cut themselves and they, because they're unhappy at home and they're not happy with their situations. Well, it is a demon spirit. It is an evil. If you have friends like this, you need to put them on your prayer list. You don't need to have them on your fellowship list. You don't need to be, a, be, be their best friend, but you can put them on your prayer list that you can pray for them. Can you clap your hands? Anyone that is in this situation, we pray. We pray that we have an, a solution for you today. And we have a solution for you. This leads to, this leads to suicidal thoughts and suicidal a situation to a point that they have to almost take you and incarcerate you, put you in the crazy house to make you well. But even that can't free you from the spirits that you're dealing with. And so here's that man that has that about him. He is bound on the inside and they try to bind him on the outside and nothing can be done to help this man or to at least tie him down so he doesn't... Uh, terrorize the coastal area. But when Jesus lands, guess what? He is the only welcoming party that Jesus have, that Jesus has to, 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 to hear somebody saying, uh, uh, Jesus, help me. He's the only one. 
Well, not the only one. He's got thousands on the inside. So there he is, and, and he begins to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, I adjure you. I adjure you in the, in the name of God that you don't torment me. Now here's the man, of, this man that is tormented, but there's somebody that is speaking from the inside. He is so, he is so uh, accustomed to these demons. He, you know, he has multiple personalities in him. And if you have multiple personalities in you, you need to come get prayed for. Now this man has multiple personalities. He is, he is, uh, uh, everybody knows him as a terror, but this time he's not terrorizing Jesus. He's actually looking to him and he wants to plead for mercy. Not the man, the demon. And he says, I adjure you by the great God of heaven. Do not torment me. And this spirit speaks out of him. He is, a, he is a leader. He is a general. Under him are many other spirits. But this is the one that speaks for the rest of them. And he, and he cries out, uh, and he is, uh, he is truly afraid that the ju his judgment day has come. But the other part of this man, it wasn't the demon, and it, but it, the other part of him, uh, he, he knows what he wants. He wants help. And so he goes before Jesus and he throws himself and worships Jesus. He worships him. And he falls prostrate and he cries out. Uh, one of them is, is, is crying out for, don't torment him. And the other one uh, that falls down, the body of this man, he falls down and he worships Jesus. And he said, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now, here is a man, a Gadarean. And so what you're seeing here is a fulfillment in a small picture, the history of that nation. That that nation did not know the Lord and they became captive to the, to the Moabites and they disappeared into history. But here's a man, a Gadarean, who almost, you're seeing the whole picture of the prophecy given to the country. And he is an example of the whole country. He's the only one that come to visit him. And so he, he look, Jesus looks at him. And he's commanded that unclean general, that leader of the legion. And he is, you know, he tells off, he says, hey, it's not just me. My name is Legion because there are thousands of us in this man. So this man now is plainly overwhelmed, is he not? Just like the prophecy said, the prophecy said that you shall be overcome. But you're going to be an overcomer. I don't know what has happened in your lives and what it is that holds you from totally giving everything you have to the Lord. Because there is a, 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 a spirit in man that is selfish and they don't want to give everything to the Lord. They don't want to give 100%. 50%, they'll bargain. 80%, 90%. But 100%. Is hard for a man to give up. It's hard. What does the Lord want from you? He wants you to be, first of all, his interest is in you. He wants you to be an overcomer. A lot of times we count the cost and we pull back because the cost we feel is too high. But what do you think this man here felt like when Jesus came? He, he, gave, he came and threw himself. He had nothing in his life. That's what you have to realize, that without Jesus, you have nothing. Amen. This man, this man is all scarred up. He's all in anguish. Uh, he is unclothed. Uh, he, is, he has nothing in life. 
but he cries out to him, uh, have mercy on me. In his spirit, it is crying out for help. He doesn't, he, in fact, he, he, he more than like it, it's to a point where he doesn't even want to, doesn't know what to do, but his, it seems like he runs up, he throws himself and begins to worship. He begins to worship. He knows that spirit in him is subservient to the great God. For he hears himself saying, oh, have you come to torment me? And that he realizes that that which has been tormenting me, I might have the opportunity to be set free today. So he falls to his knees and he cries out, he cries out, he is there prostrate before the Lord and he commands that spirit, shut up. What is your name? Come out of him. That man, that boy cried, my name is Legion for we are many. Let me stay in this country. You see that country suited him well because that was a characteristic of those people there. They wanted, they wanted Possession, possession more than blessing. There was no one there, there to meet him. In fact, when that spirit came out of him, when it came out of him and he was set free, he wanted to be with Jesus. He wanted to follow Jesus. Everything, he, everything, he realized, everything I have or don't have, Either it all belongs to Jesus. And whatever my future holds, it belongs to Jesus. He came to me, but now I want to walk with him. He said, I want, he said, let me go with you. Let, wherever you go, let me go with you. And Jesus said, no, you can't come with me. But you can go and publish everything that happened to you. And you go tell people on this side of the river what Jesus has done for you. Why don't you let Jesus do something for you? Why don't you let the Lord, amen, really do something for you? Why don't you ask him and really cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Why don't you take it upon yourself in your prayer to begin to, you have needs, uh, uh, you have needs in your life, uh, there's wants, but he wants you to go through your needs uh, and bring him your needs. Amen. What this man need? That this man needed peace, he needed clothes, uh, he, needed, he needed friends, uh, he needed fellowship. Uh, he, these are what he needed, and he came to Jesus, uh, and he, this is what Jesus gave him. People heard of it, and they began to come to see him, and he was, they realized this man is not the man that we're accustomed to seeing. Try to put in chains, but this man is clothed, and he is in his right mind. Yeah. He, they, yeah, they were accustomed that, that when this man was showing up, hey, hide the women and children. Don't look. But when they came this time, uh, they find him that he is clothed and in his right mind. You see, nakedness is a spirit. You don't realize it, but when you get the full of the Holy Ghost, you realize, amen, how you, how, how you used to dress, uh, but when the, you get the Holy Ghost, you realize there's a spirit about you uh, that, you know, the Holy Ghost tells you, uh, you're showing off a little too much skin. You're showing off a little too much skin upstairs and a little too much skin downstairs. That's what he tells you. The Holy Ghost tells you that. I'm just reminding you what the Holy Ghost has already told you. I'm, a, I'm just telling you that when you really get the Holy Ghost, you get in your right mind. And if you're not in your right mind yet, you need a little bit more Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey Him. And the more you obey Him, the more spiritual you become and more Holy Ghost you get. Don't get tired of getting more Holy Ghost. Why? Because 
the chains, nobody will be able to put chains on you. The devil will not be able to put chains on you. He will not have you on the inside anymore. But you will be what is called set free. Has anyone ever been set free in this place? Have you ever been under underweight and pressure that you called out to Jesus uh, and he set you free? I don't know about you, but he set me free. I am free. Whom the Son has set free, they are free indeed. We sat the other day, we had dinner, and there was a bar in there where we were eating. And I, and I realized how free I was. Yeah. yeah, the restaurant had a bar over on the side, there, and I realized how free I am. If that didn't have a hold on me, it's not a danger. It might be, a, you know, when you're overcoming this stuff, it might be a danger. And it might not, you know what, sometimes if there's even that kind of temptation. Don't go over there and, and, and eat where they might be serving liquor in, in that place. But when you're set free, I realize, you know, that's what God set me free from. They think they're having a good time. How did one song say they're drinking a drink called loneliness? It was they're drinking a drink called loneliness, but it's better than not drinking at all. Well, When the Lord gave me the Holy Ghost, I wasn't alone anymore. When he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I didn't need Jim Bean. I didn't need to walk with Johnny Walker. I didn't need to hobnob with Jack Daniels. I didn't need to do any of that. He set me free. I started, amen, I started drinking from a well that shall never run dry. I started drinking from a place uh, that it never tempted me again. When I made up my mind, uh, and if you need to make up your mind today, uh, I can tell you this, the chains will fall off your life, and you will be set free, and you will be free indeed. My goodness. When he makes your mind right, he will heal you from all your, of your afflictions. Yeah, you might have to work with him, but yeah, it's worth working with him. Here's what the Bible says about this nation. They came and they heard about it. They said, hey, have you heard about Legion down the road? Did you hear what happened to him? He's over there sitting and he's in church. He's having church. He's talking to Jesus. He's walking with the apostles. This man was apostolic. Yeah, he was there listening, wanting. Hey, I want to join. I want to join up. They looked at him. They were amazed. You know what they did? They ran up and they prayed to Jesus. They prayed that he would leave. You know, sometimes Jesus gets a little too close to you. I'm almost praying that he'd leave you alone. I, I, I still have too much Jesus to do before I, before I commit to Jesus, before I commit to you. I still have, you know, I still have to get married three more times before I get to you. I'm going to save you the trouble, sir. Man, I'm going to save you the trouble. Don't go that route. Yeah, I still have to do such and such. I still need to do this and that. And it was like these men, they said, they prayed him, leave us. Leave us. Don't, we don't, we don't, you know, we were okay here without you. We, we don't really need you right now that bad, Jesus. They prayed him to leave. Why did they pray him to leave? Because all those demons jumped in their livelihood, their pigs. You see, the Israelites weren't supposed to be farming pigs. Pork, bacon. Is that, you understand that? 
They weren't, they weren't supposed to be you know, bringing home the bacon. They weren't supposed to be doing that. And so it, it attached himself to their livelihood. And so they said, we really can't have that around here, Jesus. He said, why don't you please leave? Don't kill our livelihood. You see, well, once it starts talking about makes you uncomfortable, and, 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 and uh, you know, you, you might not want to come to church anymore. Why is it? Because you're like the Gadareans. You, you're like, you know what? That's touching my livelihood. That's touching, you know, I, I have to stay open on Sunday. I have to work on Sunday. I have to, I have to, you know, I can't afford to ever go to church because then I have to give and I have to do these things uh, and it touches your livelihood. You'd rather, you'd rather not come to church. Or if you fight that inclination of not wanting to come to church, maybe that's why it is. It's because it requires all of you. Amen. Not a part of it. And like one man stated, you're crying out, don't kill my pigs. That's what I live for. That's what I have. Preacher, don't preach about what I do. You're killing my pigs. You're killing what makes me, you know, you're killing that. My strips of bacon, you're taking it away from me. My comfort zone. Here's what you realize in your spirit, in your mind. Lord, I, I need to be in my right mind. Lord, I need to weigh, I need to weigh it out. And I, when I live for you, Lord, I need, to, I need to come to the right decision. I need to wait no matter what it takes. If I weigh it out, Lord, help me to come out on the right side. You have said, come, lead us, reason together, say the Lord. Let your sins be as scarlet. It shall be as wool. Not some of your sins, all your sins. Just all of it. Come to Jesus. Trust Jesus. Your friends. Notice, you might have come and you might, you might run with a bad crowd. Well, your friends aren't here, are they? They're not here, are they? No. Because they're not really your friends. If anything, you better make sure it's your friends that are talking to you and not something in them. Because they, you, they become one. They become one with the spirits that dominate their lives. But what's so wonderful about this story, here's a man that has about 2,000 demons in him. 2,000 spirits. Spirits are like wind. 2,000 of his. That's how, that's how they have found to nest in him. He is the mother load in that area of demons. But everybody's cleared out. They're torturing him. Notice, the devil cannot kill you. If Jesus has a plan for you, the devils cannot kill you. He said, it's this far, no more. Yeah, he's cutting himself. He's hurting himself, but he's alive. And if you're alive, it's because Jesus wills it that you be alive. If you have the breath of life in you, it is because he wills it. I am not through with you. He has for you a prophecy. He has for you a word. He has for you a word that you have to receive in your spirit that you are an overcomer. You might be all messed up right now, but and, and it says you shall be overcome, but in the end, you're going to be the champion. I don't care what it is that you put yourself through in life. I don't care what it is and what bad decisions you continue to make. Can I tell you this? You can overcome it all. Oh, stand to your feet and give God praise. Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Listen to the overcomers! Jesus! Listen to the overcomers! And we worship and lift you up and love you with all our hearts and souls! Oh, Jesus, you may be seated. Give me a couple of moments here. To the overcomers, 
to the overcomers. To the overcomers. You see, we have a Christian, we have in our day a Christianity without overcomers. They're overcome. Listen to me. You go to, you go to any place and they're all Christians that have been overcome. But they claim to be overcomers. They say, well, we just believe in Jesus, therefore, you know. And no one across the room will say, I'll, I'll drink to that, you know. Here they are, Christianity. They have no notion of holiness. They have no desire to preach or speak holiness. They don't desire to hear about separation. They don't desire to hear about come out from among them and be separate, save the Lord. Yeah. Touch not the unclean thing. They have, no, they have no desire. They just throw it on the wastebasket, in, in the Old Testament wastebasket, and they say, no, that's Old Testament. We don't have to do anything because then we will be by our works. And if we did works, then we can't be saved by our own works. It's a bunch of nonsense. So you show me your works and I'll show you my faith through works. Yeah. That's the faith that works. Living faith, not dead faith. Dead faith is where there's no action involved. Living faith. Cleans up your act. Living faith makes you different than what you used to be. That's living faith. Believe me, that man was clothed in his right mind. He decided, hey, I got to tell. He went through what is called the Decapolis. The Decapolis was the 10 major cities on the other side of the river that were Gentile oriented. Uh, and he went and told them what Jesus had done for him. We ought, to be ready, we ought to be ready to have an answer for every man. When, no matter in your job or when they, there ought to be enough difference in you when they realize, you know, well, what is it with you, man? You, you never swear, you know, at the, at the water cooler over there. We're all, or you walk away when we start talking about, you know. Ah. And then our poor girls, and, and, and how come you always wear dresses? And how come you always, you know, uh, dress like, do you always have to? Does your religion make you, you know? Because you're different. Don't fuck the system. It is a badge of honor. It is a badge of honor. It makes you stand out. Come out from among them and be separate. It makes, you need to change. Instead of, like the devil said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know what? Everybody looking at you and they're making fun of you. Well, Jesus said, that's what I want from you. I want somebody to see that you're different. So they'll ask you, okay, so tell me, Lydia, why do you? And then Lydia tells him. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it you don't do this or that? It's, I tell. Yeah. I started serving the Lord 40 some years ago. I don't do that anymore. We have an answer that is ready. Hey, I found something better. Would you like to come to church? Don't worry about them saying no. If they say no, well, you're doing your part. He went about the Decapolis, told everybody, this is what Jesus did for me. And somewhere along the road, somebody's going to catch wind of it and understand what you're getting at. Because there's longevity. Anybody can do, the, anybody can do what we do for a week or two. But for a lifetime? That's a different story. When they show up, when they show up or they catch you, you meet on an aisle, are you doing this and, they, and you run across somebody and you say, well, wait a minute. This guy's always the same. You, know? you, won't, find, you won't find us in places where sinners are just carousing, they're fighting, uh, where they're just living in sin, where they're debauchery. They won't find you there. But they will find you where? With your family. They'll find you in your right mind. They'll find you doing things that are convenient for the gospel's sake. Where you get able to tell them what God has done for you. Would you clap your hands to the Lord once more? Yeah. Overcoming. To all you overcomers. 
Who's going to make it in the rapture? The Bible says the overcomers. People that did something about their station in life. You might not do as much as your neighbor only because he's been at it a much longer. But no doubt there will be improvement because God's word was lodged in your heart and it fell on good ground. And the good ground gives good fruit. And the good ground stays faithful to the Lord because a seed can only give fruit of itself. An apricot will only give apricots. God's seed in you will only give godliness. It won't give off anything else. And the, car, the weeds in you might not allow that to grow, but when you start to grow in the Lord, it's when Jesus comes into your life, he's doing the same thing. Yes, I used to do this. I used to do that. I used to do all that. I used to run with that. But I, I was overcome at the beginning. I didn't know better. I was raised that way. I had too much liberty in my life. I wasn't discreet. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't chaste. I wasn't a good person. But now that Jesus came into my life, uh, I am overcoming now. I am in control. That does not control me anymore. I am in control of everything that I do in my life. I'm not going to let the same evil forces. When I was sold under sin, under Satan, and I was his prisoner, yes, he made me do. And sometimes I went along with it. I did what he wanted me to do. But now that's not the case anymore. I refuse. I may not be perfect, but I refuse. If I know, if I know who's behind it, I refuse to obey the prince of darkness. I refuse to obey his underling. I refuse to go the route of darkness because the light of life has come into my soul. Stand with me tonight. When you read in the book of Revelation, it tells you, to him that overcometh, I will give him this. To him that, seven times, to him that overcometh. It doesn't say to anybody else. To him that overcometh. You got, in a very simple illustration, all of you had to do something to be in church here today. You had to overcome something. Tiredness, laziness, no money. No gas. Your in-laws showed up right when you come to church. Some emergency took place. Might have got a flat tire, but listen, overcomers overcome. You have purpose in your life. Sickness. Some of you come to the church sick. Hurting. Now you had all this stuff happening, but something tells you, okay, I got these choices. I've got to make the choice that glorifies the Lord. I refuse to let anything come between me and my worship. Bishop, I will be there in the house of the Lord. Yes, I'm going on vacation, but I'm going to be there in the house of the Lord. You ever think about what overcoming is all about? You ever thought about the Lord, what he Test your amount of dedication. He tests you. How many times you have failed in the test because you think, well, that's okay because now, every day brings a new challenge. Every day brings a brand new challenge. Every day you have to overcome something. And so it is. If you want to know what it takes to make the rapture, the Lord simply puts it in these words. To him that overcometh, I will give him a white stone and a name written on it. To him that overcometh, I will make him a pillar in my house. To him that overcometh, I will let him sit with me on my throne in heaven. Notice who he says, to him that overcometh. Yes, hard choices. Can I tell you this? The rewards 
I cannot tell you how great the reward's in. And I sort of get a little bit jealous because sometimes there's going to be individuals here that are only going to live for God for, till Jesus comes a few months, maybe a, a year, maybe a few years, and you're going to get the same thing that I get. But the Lord says, hey, you bargained for it 40 years ago. Stay with it. Don't get jealous. Don't start crying. One went to work, got paid a penny. Well, he worked all day. Somebody worked from the afternoon, got a penny. Somebody worked in the evening, got a penny. And then there was somebody just hanging around the corner. It's like my neighborhood. Just standing around the corner. That might have been one of me. You know. I said, hey, you want to go to work? Sure. Well, actually, work's over just about, but I'm going to pay you a penny if you show up. And then they're all upset. You, you're giving them a penny? We worked all day. They said, friend, we made a deal. To, you, you worked for a penny all day long. It, was, it sounded good at the beginning, didn't it? <laughs> so don't worry about it. Because I'm good, God said, because I'm good, you call me evil? He said, just hold your peace. If God seems unjust to you, it's sometimes because you're looking at him through man's eyes. And you're judging God. He can be as good as he wants to your neighbor. He can be as good as he wants to anybody else. That's none of our business. Our business is to overcome. I'd like to open this platform today. I'd like to give you an opportunity. The Lord wants to reach out to wherever you're at. And he wants to put you on a rock that is higher than I. Yes. In our day, you might have been overwhelmed. But now is your time. Now is your hour. Now is your opportunity. To break your chains. And hold fast. To all that God has for you. Jesus is coming very, very, very soon. Listen, you keep fighting. You keep fighting against the evil inclination. You keep fighting against evil habits. Your chains are about to break. Your opportunity is coming for you to shine. He said, yes, you're going to be overcome. But that doesn't mean you have to stay in that condition. In the end, you will triumph. You will come out on top. Don't give in. Don't give up. So fight like you've never fought before. Those punches are going to start landing on the enemy. Keep stomping. One of these times you're going to, you're going to stomp on your enemy's neck. You're going to have the devil where he needs to be under your feet. That drug habit is going to drop. That old urge is going to be gone. You're going to wake up with a new opportunity. Simply because you said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me.
Don't have to go 